Hi, everybody. Look, oh, okay, so I see there's comments, so I'm just looking at them really quick. Uh, okay. Um, hi, okay, so I'm all set up here. I have my pastels here. These are the colors that I'm gonna be using today. Um, and not this one, that's too saturated. And this is the face that I'm going to be using. And uh, I'm just gonna be painting it live. So, you know, normally when I paint dolls, I'm making a video or it's for something, but um, this one I'm making for a friend and uh, I'm not going to make a video about it. So I thought it would be a good opportunity for me to show you like how the doll faces come together and how long it takes in real time. Hi everybody. Okay, look, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of people in here. Um, I'm very happy that you're here. So here's the face that we're gonna be using. It is a pigeon doll petite. So she's in the uh, one six scale. So she's a little smaller than a lot of the faces that I paint. Um, and she's in the complexion color light mocha, which is sort of a, my like light tan color. So the first thing I do when I'm painting a doll face, um, this is sort of my, the brush that I like to use for the, the foundation layer. Uh, I'm not doing any shout outs or anything like that. There's, there's too many people in here for me to get special attention, but I'm very happy that you're here and please um, enjoy. So I'm mixing these two colors together. So this is called, what is that one called? Red Iron Oxide. And then this one next to it is called Light, right? light red iron oxide and it's a sort of rust color and i think it's a good color for um just like the blushing like that so you just get a little i mix the two together because this is a little pale and this is a little rich so if you mix them together it's a really nice little blush color and that's kind of where i start um and it just gives the sculpt a little bit of life and uh you know but i don't want to go i don't want to because this is such a small head i don't want to lose any sort of like detail or make it go blurry. So I'm going to blush a little bit in the lips here and just a little bit in the eye socket here. Um, I just want a little, I just want to, I'm just kind of putting the powder onto the face. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a clean brush and I'm just going to kind of blend it around a little bit. And all I'm really doing is, oh, it's even a little too powdery for me. Um, all I'm kind of doing is just giving a little bit of life to the sculpt. You know, it's a, it's sort of a foundation layer of, uh, color that just just kind of makes it look not so monochromatic but it's not really there's not really a lot of detail yet but as you can see the sculpt looks a lot more like alive now um hi everybody I, I'm, I'm so grateful that you guys are so engaged and happy to be here and i'm happy to uh see all of you i'm not i'm not going to be able to respond to all the comments though so um just keep that in mind it's not that i'm trying to be rude I just, um, I just can't. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna take this dark brown color. Um, I think that one's called Raw Umber. And I'm gonna start laying in my features just a little bit. So I'm gonna start here on the eye and just kind of give this eye a little definition. And obviously I'm gonna, the next step will be to paint um, which I will be doing, but I do this this face first because it just gives a little uh, like the foundation. You know, it gives me the foundation for which to paint on. So if I lay if I lay the features down in powder first, then I can use it as a guide. So I'm just defining this eyelid a little bit. We're doing a super natural, super like kind of cool cool everyday makeup look, nothing too, too extreme. As I said, this is for a friend uh, and, uh, and her style is, you know, she's not a, she's not a, uh, like a drag performer or anything. So we don't need, we don't need to go nuts with the makeup. Now I'm just blending a little bit of black with this brown and I'm gonna put in the eyebrow shape. Let me zoom out a little bit. So there you go. Okay, so let me look at my reference photo here. Okay, so we're gonna go kind of close. We're not going too high with the eyebrows. Sometimes I go up here. We're not gonna go too high. We're doing a very sort of 
normal placement for the eyebrow. So we're gonna go right, right there above the eye. And again, you know, because I'm doing powder first, it's what enables me to kind of put my lines down very confidently. And I know this looks very dark, it'll lighten up um, as I blend it. But I'm just, this is a really great way to lay, if you do are painting a doll face, to lay the features down in powder first is really great because if you make a mistake, you can just um, wipe it away. Uh, I will say too, I'm not, I'm not really able to look at all the comments, everybody. There's a lot of you in here and there's a lot of people commenting. So, um, you know, please, uh, you know, if, if you're trying to get my attention, talking isn't, or commenting a lot isn't really gonna do it. Um, so if you would like to watch me paint this doll face, please do. And if you would like to talk amongst yourselves, that's also totally cool. But I'm not going to be responding to comments because uh, I'm painting a doll face right now and not responding to comments. So, you know. Okay, so I'm going to, now I'm going to go ahead, since we have these sort of dark brows in here, I'm just going to go and like blend them in a little bit and kind of create this like uh, a little bit more of like a depth to the eye socket here. You can see it, it softens it up quite a bit. Yeah. That's looking nice to me. <sighs> so one thing that I always have to be careful of too when I'm doing these, let me see here, is that I don't get, it doesn't get too blurry. So I have this, this is a kneadable eraser. So this is what I like to use to kind of come in and clean up any lines that I would like to be a little harder. So like this eyebrow here, I would like this to be come to more of a point. So I can use my kneadable eraser and kind of just refine that eyebrow shape a little bit. It's very very delicate. I don't know if you can see. Oh, you can zoom in. I'll zoom in a little bit so you guys can see how this works. So if I wanted to find this eyebrow shape a little bit before I go in with paint, I just go in with my kneadable eraser like that and it just, just cleans it up just a little bit there. And it's a little hard now, but I can still blend it. And I don't know if you can see this on camera, but there's a little bit of powder that, the powder kind of moves around a little bit and gets all over the face when you're doing this. So at this phase, I like to, or like right above the eyebrow here, you can see it looks a little smudgy. I just like to go in here with my needle blue eraser and clean all that up. And I, I don't want this really hard, clean line here, so I'm gonna just buff that out just a little bit there. Make it nice and soft. And that looks like a pretty good foundation to me uh, of, you know, I know where to go with the eyebrows, I know where to go with the eyeliner. Um, so we're just gonna move right into the paint. So. Let's, uh, let me get my palette here and move that there like that. Let me get my artist's palette. I have one that I use art oh, here we go. So I buy these, these are just called artist palettes and basically they're just like uh, paper that has been, like it has a plastic coating on it and it's good for me to mix paint on. Ooh, look, my glove. My glove has sprung a leak, but that's not a big deal. Um, I mostly just I mostly just wear the gloves. Uh, it, it's good to keep your the hand the oils from your hands off the resin as much as you can, but really I just kind of wear them because I don't really think my uh, hands are particularly photogenic. And so, <laughs> all right. So these are the brown colors that I like to use. Um, they're from I buy them at, from Volks. So you're just gonna have to excuse that rogue finger. Um, and I buy them from Volks, and they come in sort of like, they're, they're, it's acrylic paint, so it's, not, it's nothing super special. Uh, but I use them and, uh, what is that? yeah, so here's a dark brown, and here's sort of a medium brown. So I'm going to mix these two together. Oops. I'm going to mix these two together and create um, sort of my eyebrow colors. So obviously we're painting a very small face, so we don't need a lot. So this is my light brown and this is my dark brown. I'm gonna go in with 
the light brown first, but also before I do that, I'm also gonna mix in my acrylic thinner, um, if I can find it. Yeah, I should have had a lot of this stuff set up before. So my acrylic thinner comes with it. Here, here it is. And basically it looks like water and it smells like rubbing alcohol. I think it's probably alcohol based, but what it does is it makes the paint just a little more fluid. So um, I like to mix it with that. And that, that makes the, the paint lie nice and flat when it's dry. All right, let me pick out a nice brush here. Let's go with this one. Um, very thin little brush. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go in with the lighter brown first, and then I'll go into my darker colors. Okay, let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see what's going on here. This is a very very simple face up, nothing too complicated. This actually might be lighter than the color that I used. That's similar. So I kind of go in the center of the brow and then I just kind of like fan it out and create individual strokes for the hairs. I think that's really important for like a good, a good brow. And oftentimes I work with a magnifier, but um, that would make it too hard for me to show it on camera. So I'm just doing this with my raw eyes. So you know, hopefully I don't mess up too much. Just going in and painting these portions. But I definitely, the where I want to pay the most attention to is right here, like at the end of the brow, because those are the little flecks that really show and kind of make it really seem like an eyebrow, as opposed to like in this area, it tends to get um, kind of dense and so you don't see the individual strokes as much. Okay. You love the background music? Thanks. It's a, uh, a record I just bought last week. I had my husband, who's a much more of like a, a classical connoisseur, help me pick out. I don't know if it is yet, but I'm hoping because it's an old classical record that it won't get flagged for music violation on this, but who knows? I think the record might be over. So now I'm going in with my lashes. So I'm taking in that same lighter brown color and I'm just doing some very uh, small, thin, wispy, well, not small, but, you know, dense, dense and delicate bottom lashes here, like that. Let's do the other side. I kind of go and like, do a little sweep here like that, get the paint in, and I just, you know, this takes, this takes a little practice, but just very delicate little eyebrows, eyelash strokes. Sometimes, sometimes I go down and sometimes it's better to go up. This side likes to go up. It just sort of depends on like the angle I can get with my hand. All right, that looks pretty good to me. And then oh, while I'm here too, I'm gonna, before I mix over to the dark brown, I'm going to do a little bit of a, like a cut crease, I think. Um, let me double check my reference photo before I do this, but yeah. So we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to define the uh, upper eyelid a little bit um, and do like a crease here. So I'm going to mix a little bit of the, the light brown and the dark brown together with that on camera so you can see it. Um, and I'm going to try to make this as even and symmetrical as possible. But you know, nobody's, nobody's eyelids are perfectly symmetrical, so you don't have to be too precious about it. So I'm going to start here and then just very slowly create the shape. And then you get this nice little cut crease, but I'm not doing like a, like a draggy, like a, a fantasy cut crease like you do. It's a, this one's like, it's supposed to look like a real eyelid. Is there somebody spamming? I will take, I will stop what I'm doing to kick out a spammer. Um, is that something that needs to happen? Who, who's spamming? 
who's spamming and I'll, I'll take care of it right now. I can't respond to comments, but uh, I will I will take care of spammers. Athena, okay, Athena, where are you? If I see you come up, Athena. Okay, I see you say no, please. So Athena, stop it or I will kick you out. Okay, I'm gonna forgive you this one time, but stop spamming. And if anybody else spams, I will also kick them out. I'm not gonna kick you out, Athena, because you said no, please. So you are aware of what you're doing, but do not spam. I don't wanna to have to take time out from what I'm doing to parent you guys. This is an all ages show, but please, please show a little respect. So I'm now I'm going in with my darker brown and I'm just going in and refining that eyebrow and I'm being careful to be very delicate on the side here or like uh, uh, towards the inner corner because I want that to be lighter. Um, and then I want it to sort of deepen as I come out. And eventually I'm gonna bring black into this as well but um, that'll be, I always use black as the last color. Thank you for apologizing, Thina. I'm glad you didn't mean to be rude. Now we are in an understanding. And, uh, you know, don't do it again. Okay, so I'm just going in and painting little brow hairs and see with the distinction between the lighter brown and the dark brown now you can get a little bit more uh like dimension to the eyebrow so i'm going to go in and just very carefully define that tail with the eyebrow is that what you call that a tail i think so right looks pretty good to me how long does this take? We'll see. <laughs> uh, not that long. This is a pretty simple face up. So now I'm going to go in on the top of the eye here and put in my dark brown and do the upper lashes. I usually like to start with my lighter colors and then work up to the darker colors because then you can be more sparing with them. So again, now that I have this sort of line in here, I'm just going to go in and just paint a few lashes coming up into the upper eye. And again, as you can see, that distinction between the light brown and the dark brown, it really like makes a difference here. What color eyes? You're gonna have to wait and see. I have the eyes to the side here. So I before I, when I actually will um, make this tall, like finish her, <coughs> I'm gonna have to spray, spray her with a sealant, but uh, before I put the eyes in, but I, uh, I'll put the eyes in on camera for you guys to see so you can see the doll, the, her face all finished. So now I'm just going in and doing the other side. This is my first time doing a live in the horizontal format. Do you guys like it better? I figured since this is YouTube, you know, this is how people watch things like this. It also makes it easier for me because I can keep it like, I can keep her on screen a lot easier. This is a really, this is a lot smaller head than I usually use. This is my one six scale doll. So she's like a quarter of the size of my normal dolls. Not a quarter, like half, I guess. Not, not even half. My normal dolls are about 16 inches tall or 40 centimeters. And this doll is 12. So whatever percentage that is. I'm uh, not thinking about math right now. Um, yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, I use different sizes just depending on what, I'm gonna turn on the second light. Um, oh, it's not plugged in, Never mind. I'm not. Uh, I use different sizes depending on what it's being used for. So a lot of my like video dolls are this scale because this is a more traditional size for a fashion doll. But I like to work really big, um, so you know, I make the big dolls for, for me and for, you know, the, the more serious collector because they, uh, they tend to be able to have a little bit more detail. I'm sorry. I'm just keep reopening my iPad. So, uh, my friend also has freckles, so we're going to be adding some freckles as well. So I don't know if you could see, but I was just adding more thinner to the paint here and I'm just bringing it out here and 
mixing it in. So now it's a very sort of watery, but I didn't use water, I used paint thinner or acrylic paint thinner, which I think is alcohol based. And we have a very sort of light brown. And I just want it to where like, I just want a little bit on there because I need to make very tiny little freckles. So um, I'll show you how I do that. Here we go. Let me kind of move these out of my way because I don't need them anymore. Okay, so we're gonna do some very small little freckles. I usually kind of start off to the side since it's not like the center of the face before I and just do little practices. Sometimes, especially your first few freckles can be a little heavy handed. So to go in like this. And I think the real key to good freckling is knowing that freckles come in a variety of shapes and sizes and colors. So you don't want your freckles to be all the same size or shape or color. So I usually start with my lighter freckles. So these actually look a little darker because they're it's still wet paint, but they're gonna dry to be super pale. And then I'm gonna go in with some darker ones. Um, I usually like to concentrate my freckles on this sort of uh, arc of the face, like kind of where the sun's gonna hit it across the nose and over the cheeks. Uh, but I put them everywhere, but that's kind of where I, I, I start. Some on the forehead. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with my darker color and put in some darker freckles too to balance it out. Just a few, you don't want to overdo it. But a few darker freckles will kind of, you know, make, make them look a lot more real. Yeah, I think that looks good. And you can see there, the eyelids here aren't exactly symmetrical, but as long as it reads okay. So I'm going in with my darker one and I'm gonna round, since I used light brown at first, I'm gonna just to find the center a little bit more. I'm gonna round that out. Let me go back in and do the other side too. Uh, please don't spam Stranger Things. I'm gonna put you on timeout. Okay, I got, I got the spam. I'm not calling out spammers' names anymore. I'm just going to be putting you on timeout. So that, that person has been put on timeout. It's hard for me to moderate my own <clears throat> videos like this, but I'll do it. I will do it. I'm just going in with a few more little lashes here on the side. Got that with my thumb. Um, okay. Yeah, that's looking nice. I like the freckles. Oh, Dawn88 is here, or Daw88. Um, she is somebody, or they, I don't know if you're a boy or a girl, or, or non-binary, I don't know who you are. But I know your name is Daw88, and you have moderated for me before, and you always jump on it, and I'm so grateful because... Uh, you know, because we don't know each other, I can't unnecessarily warn you when I'm going to go live, but I appreciate you coming in all the time and helping moderate because things get um, a little a little spammy here sometimes. So anyway, just coming together. Uh, let's put a little, we're, we're going to do a super neutral uh, lip in here, but I want it to be, oh, uh, thanks everybody for saying hi to Daw88. They are super nice and super helpful to me. And we love them. We stand dot eight. So I'm going to mix a little lip color. So I have this um, coral shell that I use that I like a lot, or it's called Shell Pink uh, by Aqua Gouache. And I'm going to mix it with a little bit of this uh, like orangish red color that it's a different by different person. I'm mixing way more paint than I need. I just need like a dollop. But okay. So between the two. I think we'll get a nice neutral lip color. And again, I just want it to be very neutral. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of this paint first. I'll put this in camera so you can see a little bit better. Um, 
So, and I still have the brown on my paint, which I, on my paintbrush, which I did want, because I want this to be really muted. So I'll start with that color, and now I'm going to mix in just a little bit of this orangey red until it looks like a nice, pleasant, neutral, sort of kind of an unpainted lip color, even though, you know, this is painting. What's funny is I always get, you know, <laughs> I always get requests to do natural makeup on dolls, and sometimes I kind of try, but I don't really try that hard because... The thing is, is like all the features are painted on, so there's never, you're never gonna really be able to do a completely natural look, in my opinion. You can see the freckles are drying now, so as they're drying, the ones that I first did are very light and they're kind of fading into the background, and the darker ones are kind of popping out, but that's what gives it that sort of more realistic look. So I think this is a good color, but let's test it, let's test it on, t on the doll itself. You know, you want it to pop and define the lip, but I don't want it to look like a painted lip. I want it to look as close to a natural look as possible. That might even be a little light. Let's, let's move in a little bit more red. Am I gonna show you the finished product? No, because I'm not gonna be able to finish her today, um, but I will be able to show you her with eyes in it. But uh, yeah, I think, you know, I'll probably take photos of this doll before I give it to my friend, but I think this will probably be the only chance that you'll, uh, that she'll be sort of available for public view. So take it in while you can. So I'm just being very delicate with the lips and just filling it in. I think this is a nice lip color though. It feels very like neutral. It matches the blush, um, you know, and, I, and once it dries, it'll dry matte. You know, obviously it's wet paint, so it's very glossy right now, but it's gonna dry matte and I think it'll be really nice. Um, I see some people asking if I sell my dolls. I'm, I'm not selling them at the moment. I have uh, a lot of things going on, and so I'm not really able to provide dolls uh, to the public at the moment. Um, but I do make a lot of videos about making them. So, you know, I just tell people you can enjoy and experience my work that way right now. We might, that might change in the future. I don't know yet. But um, right now, I don't have any dolls for sale. I think that looks good. What do you guys think? I'm going to use the same color and do paint the, um, the inner, like the water line. Even if it's like a small line like that, I really think it helps like make the eye pop. It's like a very small detail that I think really makes all the difference. So I just do the bottom like that. I don't, I don't do the top because this is where I'm going to glue a lash. But you can kind of see here, like, I don't know, it's just like a little this side versus this side. It's just, it's just nice. It's just nice. Okay, I'm going to do this side now. Fortunately, it's a very sort of dry, hot day in LA, so my paint is drying relatively fast, so I can kind of do all this in real time. Make the eyebrows almost all the way dry, and so are the freckles, which is nice. Yeah, they look really cute. I like, I like how this doll is turning out. Okay, so now I'm just going in for like a little bit of a second coat, because sometimes, especially right here on the lip, it tends to thin out a little bit, and I want it to be a nice, even application. Yeah, I think that looks good. Um, will I be using a lacquer to finish? No, I use a sealant spray. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, uh, so I'm gonna wait for this to dry, I'm gonna spray it, and I'll probably go in with like one more layer of powder, but I'm not gonna show you that. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put in the eyes. Uh, I'm not gonna outline the lips because I want, it, I want them to look like natural, natural, like unpainted lips. So we're not doing any kind of 
uh, fun cosmetics on this this particular doll. So this is the eyeball that I'm going to use, and I put it I put a little plasticine behind it to help lock it into place. But I throw in the eye like that. I just brought the eyeball so you guys could see what she looked like with her eyes in. And then that's a little high. I like to kind of move them so the eyes a little further up into the socket like that. And I think that looks really nice. So let me put the other eyeball in. It looks like a tooth. <laughs> it's just plasticine, it's just clay. And then this is what the eyeball looks like. Ah, come on, I can't pick it up with gloves. There you go. This is the eyeball, this is what it looks like. So I just put a little plasticine in the back of the eyeball, which makes it look like that. And then I just use that to put it into place. Here, like, burp, burp, burp. I know this is kind of creepy for some people. Um, but this is, ooh, look at her, look at that. Um, and then I use the back of a, a paintbrush usually and I set the eyeball into place. Uh, it got a little weird in there. Let me, let me read. Let me, ooh, this one got weird too. Okay, hold on, let me fix this one. Where you place the eyeball in the socket is super important for like the way your doll's expression looks. If you put it too forward like that, I mean, that's not so bad, but she looks a little intense, like she's angry or staring at you. If you bring it up here like that, it's, it gives it a much more sort of relaxed, sort of peaceful, kind of sleepy look, which I like a lot more. Okay, so let me try to put this eyeball back in at the right way. My favorite way to really have a doll's eye though is, is side facing like that. I like, a, I like a side glance, but for the sake of this demo, we're just gonna do front facing. Okay, so this one, you can see here, it's a little, I want, I want the bottom of the eyeball to be hitting the base of the lower lid. So this one is a little bit under it. So I'm just gonna use my paintbrush and bring it up. It needs to be over a little bit too. Come on. Now it's too far up. That's too far over. It's a, it's a balancing act. It's a balancing act, everyone. Why is it not looking normal to me? I cannot get this eye in right. Of course, of course it's when I'm on camera. All right, like, let me just, I'm gonna take it out one more time and start over. Sorry, everybody. Sometimes I'm good at this and sometimes I'm not, you know? I might have too much um, plasticine on here. I know it's really goofy looking when the eyes are shuffling around. I know, I know, I know. This is, I don't usually show this part in my videos because it's not, it's not like particularly glamorous. And I don't usually show parts of doll making that aren't glamorous. Look at this eyes coming out now. I just show the pretty parts. Come on, there we go. All right, so that eye looks good. I have less plasticine on this eyeball now. Let me see if I can get it into the correct spot. And if I can't, no, I can't. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do this. Okay, that's almost correct, but you can see this one's a lot lower than this one. So I'm just going to bring it up a little bit and over. Also, it's also because of the size of this one. All right, maybe I can't do this on camera. Maybe I can just, let me do this off camera by myself so I can use my eyeballs. Because right now I'm just looking at the screen and trying to do it. That's that's a little challenging too. Um, you guys get it though. Oh my God, that's so much easier. Okay. Well, is it? I spoke too soon. Does that look good? That looks pretty good. Over like a little bit more that way. Like that. Okay. Okay. That looks good to me. Okay. So this is what she looks like all done and painted with her eyeballs. I'll be putting in lashes and she'll have hair and that sort of stuff. Um, the nice thing with inside eyes is if I did want to change their direction, so if we wanted to make her like side glancing, I can just move them over like that. And now she's like looking off to the side, which is kind of fun. Anyway, oh, we got a little plasticine sticking out over here. Okay, I'm embarrassing myself. Um, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna take these eyeballs out. I'm gonna go, uh, this is the finished face. Thanks everybody for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. I will be leaving it up on YouTube. 
um, so people can watch me paint a quick doll face in real time. Um, we've only been doing this for 35 minutes, so it's not so bad. Um, it's very watchable length. So thanks everybody. Uh, if you have any questions for me, send me a DM or uh, an email or whatever. Uh, but until then, uh, I'll see you guys later. All right, bye.